Praise the Lord. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our Father, we thank you for the possibilities of the grace of God and of your power in every believer. We are praying, O oh Lord, that this year you will do things in our lives and through our lives, things we've never known, things we've never seen. That every believer, every minister, every leader will enter into a new realm of the supernatural in Jesus' name. What in the past made us afraid? We pray that in the new year, as we walk with you, as we move on with you, we'll be courageous and bold, and we'll be able to walk on the sea of our circumstances in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Lord, that tonight you will not only teach us faith, you will impart faith into every heart in Jesus' name. That everything you purpose for us to do in the kingdom, we will do it in Jesus' name. That you'll raise up giants out of people who thought they were grasshoppers. And you make us to be able to do the very works of Jesus Christ. To your own glory, to our own joy, to the benefit of your church. In Jesus' name, we pray. Tonight, for our revival session, we're looking at a message that may seem incredible for many people. It's faith that attempts the impossible. Faith that attempts the impossible. There are scriptures we know when we are making use of the word possible or impossible. And many times we associate the word possible. We associate that with God. And we're right. Because we're told in Matthew chapter 19, in verse 26, Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. I'm sure as uh, readers and students of the Bible, you know this situation here. Jesus had spoken about the difficulty of a man trusting in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. And then from what Jesus said, the disciples felt with all the advantages of the rich man. If he does not enter the kingdom of God, who else will enter into the kingdom of God? And then Jesus made this statement and said, With men, this is impossible. Then he should have said, please note, but with God, it is possible. That is, if Jesus Christ limited himself to the event being discussed, if Jesus Christ limited himself to the case of the rich man or any rich man getting into the kingdom of God, he should simply have said, with men, this is impossible. But with God, this case in point, this is possible. But Jesus Christ extended it. He expanded it. He now made it to include everything there is to be done. And he said, with God, all things are possible. And it's not difficult to believe that if you believe in God. You know that with God, all things are possible. In Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 37, Again, the angel was talking with Mary, and uh, it was a particular case indeed. And what was the case? 
it was a case of Mary being able to have a child without knowing a man. It was a peculiar case and a special case, of course. And it happened only to her. But she questioned and said, How will this be since I do not know any man? And then eventually the angel gave the answer and said, The Holy Ghost will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. And then continued in verse 37, he said, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Can I remind you again that if the angel was limiting himself to the case in point, he could simply have said, For with God, it's not impossible. To do this thing that we are discussing, again the angel expanded the message, extended it from the point being discussed and said, Mary, don't let that surprise you. In fact, we're going to go beyond the point we're discussing now because with God, nothing shall be impossible. When you join those two things together, number one, with God, all things are possible. Then it says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. When you bring everything together, it's confirming and telling you that God can do all things. And God will do all things in your life. But what we're talking about tonight is not just that with God, nothing shall be impossible. Everybody knows that. Even evangelicals who do not believe in Pentecostal experience, they believe that. Even the people that are not even born again, they believe that. That's not a big deal for you to rise up and say, I believe that with God all things are possible. What? Even a pagan will rise up and say, you believe that? I believe that too. Even somebody of another religion will rise up and say, what do you think I believe? I believe that you, that with God all things are possible. And that with God nothing shall be impossible. But now I come to the point where we leave the unbelievers behind. Where we leave the weak and the feeble-minded behind. Where we leave our friends, our evangelical friends, we leave them behind. And I am going to talk of the possibility of faith in the life of the believer. And if you will believe God tonight and believe God for the rest of your life, you'll get into the supernatural realm. Nothing will be impossible in your life. Look at two scriptures. We're looking at two scriptures and we're looking at uh, Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, reading from verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. You think you know the story that we're looking at here? It's the story of uh, that epileptic child. The father had brought the child to the disciples. And the disciples were not able to do anything. And Jesus came back from the Mount of Transfiguration. And then when he came back, the father brought the child to Jesus Christ and said, See this child. I brought him to your disciples. They were not able to do anything about it. If you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And then Jesus said, If you can believe. He addressed that to an ordinary man. Not a worker. Not an apostle, not an evangelist, not a prophet, not a big leader, just an ordinary member of a believing community who believed and recognized that Jesus is able to do it, that it only takes the will of God. If you will, you can. If you desire, you can. If you want to, you can. I believe in you. Jesus addressed this to the normal, ordinary believer. And he said, you believer, members of the church, if you believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. That's my conviction. That's what makes me to have the conviction that normal believers can have miracles in their lives. That if they only believe and believe in the Lord, all things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible to him that believeth. But then you look at the Matthew account. 
And now we're looking at Matthew chapter 17. Actually, we're looking at the same story here. And we're looking at a statement which looks similar to the one I've read to you in Mark, but which is a little bit different in Matthew chapter 17. And reading from verse 20, we read from verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And I see it a little bit. The thing that Jesus said in Mark to that man, the father of the epileptic child, if you can only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. That took place, that statement was before the miracle. The father came to Jesus Christ and said, my boy is suffering. My boy is being tormented. See the thing, it will cast him into the fire, it will cast him into the waters. Can't you do something to help us? Can't you have compassion on us? Do something if you can. And Jesus, before the miracle was performed, he said, man, if you can only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Again, he extended that statement beyond the healing and the deliverance of the epileptic child. And he said, if you believe, all things are possible to him, the normal believer who believes in the Lord. But now, this is after the miracle had taken place. The disciples were watching him. The leaders were watching him. And with ease, with authority and power, he cast out that evil spirit. And that child became completely normal. He was cured from that very hour. And the disciples didn't do like many of us who have done. Oh, well, he is Jesus. I'm just a disciple. I don't expect to do what he's doing. He is the Messiah. I'm just a saved soul. I don't expect to be equal to the Messiah in the manifestation of power. He is the very son of God that was uh, that became man and took our and is taking our place. He is because of his authority as the son of God. He could do that. I will never even ask the question, why couldn't I? Of course, the professor can solve a lot of uh, problems that I cannot solve. I'm just a learner. I'm just a student. They didn't take that view. They didn't take that attitude. You know what they did? They went to the Lord. They said, Lord... Why couldn't we cast that evil spirit out? And then in verse 20, Jesus said unto them, Oh, because you are human, I am superhuman. Did he say that? Oh, it's because you are just disciples, I am the Savior. Did he say that? Oh, because it's given unto me to do some special things, because those are the credentials of my messiahship. He didn't say that. It is so well because that belongs to my realm. That's a special thing I can do that nobody else can do. He didn't say that. He said, you couldn't do it because of your unbelief. But please understand, they believed in God. It's not unbelief in that area. They believe that God can do all things. Not unbelief in that area. They believe in Jesus Christ as a son of God. It's not unbelief in that area. They believe that they were even born again. They were citizens of the kingdom. They were children of God. It's not unbelief in that area. It is unbelief in the area that they felt they could not do it. That's why I said, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, Think about it. You don't need a mountain, a kind of sized faith. You know, some people say, I, I am, I'm really working it out. And I'm reading my Bible. I'm claiming all the promises. And I have a little faith now, but wait for me. It's going to take me some time. When my faith becomes very big like a mountain, I'm telling you, I'm going to do something. Jesus said, you don't need that much faith. All the faith you need is the grain of mustard seed. And I'm asking you, church, how long is it taking you to have faith like a grain of mustard seed? It shouldn't take time. If you are born again, that same faith that saved you has got the greatest miracle into your life. And that same faith 
will do every other thing in your life. Amen? Amen. And so he said, all you need is faith like a grain of mustard seed. Then you will say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. Here is the word, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. That's what Jesus said. If I said it, you might have a problem with me. If Moses said it, you'll say we don't know whether the Lord inspired him to say that or not. If another person said that, you'll say, well, maybe he really didn't mean what he said. But this is Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, the Word personified. He himself said, if you have this faith as a grain of mustard seed, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now, bring the two things together. The one in Mark and the one in Matthew. He told the ordinary believer. He told the father of the epileptic boy. He said, if you can only believe, nothing shall be impossible unto you when you believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. He told the disciples, the apostles, the workers, and the leaders, and he said, if you just have the faith as a grain of mustard seed, then you will say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And he said, it will obey your voice. And then he said, nothing shall be impossible unto you. But you have to attempt the impossible before you can accomplish the impossible. Faith will attempt something. Faith will do something. Have you noticed in scripture? If you have faith, you will not be quiet about it. And you will not say, well, I will not say anything. I will not do anything. I will not act it out. I'm just going to allow the faith to work by itself. All the people that had faith in Bible days, they did something. They put action to their faith. In uh, Hebrews chapter 11, as we look at the uh, heroes of faith, you'll find something very clearly. Their faith acted out, either said something or did something, and they were not disappointed. In the case of Abel, we're told by faith, Abel offered unto God. The faith did something. In the case of Noah, we're told that by faith, Noah built an ark. He prepared an ark for the salvation of his house. The faith did something. In the case of Abraham, verse 8, Hebrews chapter 11, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out, he went out. You can see that there are verbs. Those are words of action that are related with the faith that they manifested. And in the case of Sarah, we are told in verse 11, through faith, Sarah also herself received strength to conceive. And then we are told about Moses that Moses by faith refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. That means if you have faith, you are going to do something. And this year, you are going to do something. It's uh, wonderful when you have somebody that has faith and is not afraid of any problem. And he knows that by the grace of God, this mountain, we are going to remove it. This problem, we are going to solve it. This sickness, we are going to take it away. This uh, attack of evil spirit, this fellow is going to get delivered. Because if you have faith, you will attempt the impossible. I don't want to preach uh, long tonight, but I'm still going to give you some references of the scripture. I'm going to, you know how many points I'm going to deal with? How many points? Oh, you know it already. I'm going to deal with uh, three points. Number one, fearing before the impossible. Fearing before the impossible. You know, that's a natural thing we do. Uh, when something seemingly impossible confronts us, the very first thing we do is to fear. But then, point number two, faith that sees the invisible. It's going to take faith for you to be able to see the invisible. I believe that as a believer, you should be able to see the invisible. And when you see the invisible, then you will accomplish the impossible. Point number three, faith that accomplishes the impossible. Can you do it? I said, can you do it? Number one, fearing before the impossible. 
As I said, we are not going to go too many verses, but look at Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, reading from verse 9 through to verse 11. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Do you realize how Moses would have thought about that? Because he knew the power of the uh, government of Egypt. He knew the power and the might of the chariots of Egypt. Not only that, he knew the power of the magicians in Egypt. Not only that, he knew the furnace, the iron furnace, into which those people were cast. In his mind, as a person that grew up in Egypt before and did something wrong and then was driven to the land of the Midianites, he was afraid because it was like an impossible task what he was to do. And then in verse 11, And Moses said unto God, Who am I? that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. You remember in Exodus chapter 14, that was the same attitude that the children of Israel uh, had when they saw the Egyptians coming behind them and the Red Sea in front of them and the mountains on either side and there was no way to escape. They were afraid because it is the natural thing for a man or a woman to be afraid before the impossible. When something seems impossible, the thing you do is that you are afraid. In Second Kings, Second Kings, chapter chapter five. Second Kings, chapter five, reading from verses six and seven. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith uh, sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Now actually the uh, Naaman, uh, the captain of the host of the uh, Syrians, had been sent to Elisha. But uh, he made a mistake. He went to the king. And when he got to the king, he gave him the letter. He said, I'm a leper, and the king in our country said, when I get to you, kill me before I go back. And what do you, uh, what do you think? That man was afraid. He trembled. In verse 7, and it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, am I God to kill and to make alive? That this man does send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy. Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. Now you see that he was so afraid that uh, he will do that. Do you remember when the Lord told uh, Ananias? He said, Ananias, he said, here am I, Lord. And then he said, have you heard of one man? His name is Saul of Tarsus. And then he told him the street where he is now. And he said, get up right there and go and minister to him. And you know what Anna said? I'm saying it in my language now, not the quotation of the Bible. He said, oh Lord, have I finished my ministry? You want me to die? You finish with me? That I'm going to go to Saul? Because once you get to that man, everything is finished. What I'm telling you is, when something seems impossible we become afraid and i'm going to tell you god has given us tasks that look naturally impossible and yet we're going to do it but at the first time when you hear about it you're afraid for example number one it says go preach the gospel to every creature think about it how are those people to do it without radio without television without aeroplane not even vehicle. Even bicycle, motorcycle was not available at that time. They were not very educated to speak all the languages of all the people on earth. And Jesus gave them that impossible task. Go preach the gospel to every creature. Naturally impossible. But we are going to do it. Number two. Open the eyes of the blind. Naturally impossible. But that's what the Lord has told us to do. And we are going to do it in Jesus name. 
And do you know something that I discovered in this Christian life? Not always that your fear will cancel your faith. Maybe I told you before, but I'll tell you again. You know, in the Bible, when I study the Bible, something surprises me. I see the people that are afraid, and yet even though they are afraid of the impossible, yet they manifested faith, and their faith worked. Let me give you an example. You see, uh, the, the king uh, in Samaria, he had said to the god of Ekron, he had said, go and ask from the god of Ekron whether I will recover from this sickness or not. And then God told um, Elijah, he said, go and uh, meet the servants of the king and ask him, is it because there is no God in our land here in Israel that you have sent to Ekron, because of that, you will not come down from that bed. And so those people went back, they said, oh king, we have news for you. What's the news? It's bad news. We met a man, and he said, is it because there is no God that uh, you have sent to the God of Ekron, therefore you are going to die? He said, what? Who is that man? We don't know his name. Then they described, he said, that's Elijah. Go back there, catch him, bring him here. And then when they said that, Elijah was on the mountain top. And then they were coming. He said, man of God. The king said, come down. And he was afraid. But even though he was afraid, he said, he didn't tell them he was afraid. The difference between you and Elijah is, you announce to the devil you are afraid. You announce to the demons you are afraid. Elijah will not tell you, but he was afraid inside. So he said, if I be the man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. And they were consumed. And he was afraid. And so, those people did not come back. He sent another fifty and his captain and said, man of God, if uh, the king is calling you, please come down. And that man was still afraid. He said, uh, all right. If you see a man of God, let fire come down and consume you. And the fire came down and consumed them. He was afraid, but the fire came down. And then the third group came and uh, said, man of God, come down. And then the angel said, Elijah, don't be afraid. That means he was afraid before. He said, go with them. So he came down and now went with them. You know what I learned from there? You may have fear. If you act bold and you are covered with the blood of the Lamb, and you declare that thing, and you say, Thus says the Lord, you sickness, come out. That thing will come out. I said that thing will come out. Now, I've given you biblical example. I'm going to give you now present day example. You want that? I told you before. I'll tell you again. Maybe some of you. Some of you have never heard because you are coming for the first time. And some of you never listen to the case, so you've never heard. You like to hear again? How many of you know what I'm going to say? <laughs> All right, God, God bless you. 1985, am I right? 1985, we had a crusade at the National Stadium. And you know, the deeper life people are, they make publicity and they're still doing it today. God is going to do this, God is going to do this, God is going to do that. And I was afraid. They said the eyes of the blind will open, the lame will walk, this will happen, that will happen. I was so afraid I couldn't eat. And the very first day of that crusade, from morning till evening, I, well, I say I was fasting. But it was compulsory fast. Because I was imagining, every time when I woke up in the morning, I said today is the first day of this crusade. And these people have announced that the blind eyes are going to open. This is going to happen. That is going to happen. I was afraid. I can tell you now because I'm no more afraid. I couldn't tell you at that time. And uh, so we got there in the evening. And uh, you know when we were driving in, I saw those uh, people, lame people, they were, you know, crawling on. And then I turned my head the other way. And then I saw some blind, blind people. I'm telling you something that will help you. Because even though you are afraid, you can do the same thing you have heard that has been done here. You will do it. 
I, I saw some of those uh, blind people and they were leading them that way and then I turned my head the other way. I didn't want to say anything that will discourage me. That will make my the little faith I had everything to go down. And then we drove to the stadium, the choir people here, and they were there, they were seated, they were singing their beautiful songs. I didn't know what they sang till today because I couldn't hear what they were singing. And uh, so somebody made the introduction and then I came in there and I preached on salvation that Jesus will save. You repent of your sin, I know Jesus will save. That one is easy because I'm not the one going to do it. They are the people to repent. They are the people to believe in the Lord. And the Lord is the one to forgive them. All that is easy. And so, but I knew the people were waiting for the miracle prayer. We took time and said, you know, give your name. We want to do the follow-up. We're going to help you. They took the names, but I knew that the hour was coming. As we were rounding up the, uh, you know, taking their names and all that, I knew that about five minutes more, my heart almost jumped out. Because I knew that, aha, that time must now come. And uh, so I got there, and uh, I knew that uh, you only die but once. Uh, so I got there, and I said, let us pray. And uh, so I began to pray and said, uh, Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we are here today, not me, all of us. And uh, so I said, in the name of Jesus, as we all are believing you together, uh, those blind people touched their eyes. While I was praying with that fear at the back of my mind, I had a shout in the congregation. A blind, the blind eyes had opened. I didn't say it at that time, but inside my heart, I said, ah, ah. something really happened. And they jumped out, and they came out. I said, I can do this thing. The power is there. The gift is there. I didn't know. The next day when I came back, I looked at the blind people. I said, praise the Lord, they are here today. I looked at those people that were lame, they were dry. I said, praise the Lord. God is going to do something today. It wasn't like yesterday anymore. You may be afraid, do it. You may be afraid, attempt the impossible. It will be so in Jesus' name. You know, the things have changed now because I'm talking of 1985. And this is 1997. And almost 12 years have gone. And because of that, I don't have that kind of fear anymore now. I can walk into a crusade now and just announce even before I begin to pray that get ready, you are catching your miracle now. It wasn't like that at that time. Don't look at that and get discouraged and say, I cannot do it like the pastor. Start where I started. And even though the fear is there, it happens to everybody. Jeremiah was afraid. Moses was afraid. Elijah was afraid. All the people you have read about, they were afraid. At one time or the other, it is a natural tendency of a man, of a woman, to be afraid of the impossible. Even though you are afraid this new year, begin, you will do wonders. Because you believe in the name of Jesus. After all, it's not you doing it. It is the power in the name of Jesus that is doing it. And that power in the name of Jesus is as real in your mouth as it is in my mouth. You will do it. I said you will do it. We have been called to open the eyes of the blind. To make the dead to hear the message of grace. We have been called to turn the occultic from the power of Satan unto God. We have been called to heal the sick and even raise the dead. And uh, we have been called to teach the unteachable. How about that? You are called upon to teach the people that are unteachable. And to enlighten the ignorant. To combat the enemies of God. To become the friends of the Lord. To come into fellowship with him. And to influence the worldly minded to desire to go to heaven impossible tasks that when you think about them you will think that it's impossible i cannot do it but if you will attempt the impossible you will see something happen i said you will see something happen and it will be so in jesus name now point number two faith 
that sees the invisible. Faith that sees the invisible. The point is, you have to see it with the eyes of the cleansed heart. Before you see it with your physical, natural eyes. See it done. Call it already before it comes into manifestation. You see, that's the kind of faith that Moses had in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 27. 11, 27. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured at seeing him who is invisible. He endured at seeing him who is invisible. Uh, therefore, see the invisible. What it means is, now you have a sick person before you. And uh, you want to pray so that this sick uh, uh, person will be completely healed. Now, although the sickness is there, although the problems are there, as you close your eyes and you say, let us pray in your mind, in your heart, visualize that the Lord is there. You are not the one doing it. Visualize that already you have prayed. You have not prayed yet. Visualize that the Lord is already uh, starting the work. And visualize that the fellow is already well and everything is okay. When you visualize that and you know that it's going to be like that, you see it before it comes to pass. You will be able to manifest the kind of faith in the Bible. Uh, you know, uh, nowadays, I wouldn't do that uh, many years ago, but nowadays, sometimes I go to a crusade. And the people are not very familiar with my way of ministering in the crusade. And uh, I finish the prayer. And I say, now check up. The miracle is there. And everywhere looks uh, very, very quiet. One of our uh, leaders uh, told me one day, he said, uh, when you finish prayer, and then you said, now check up, every, it's there. And then the people, everybody was quiet. It appeared that nothing had taken place. The brother said he was afraid. As if today is today. It appears that today nothing happened. But I stood there and I said, I'm waiting for you. The miracle is there. And uh, if the people do not come out, if they do not say, praise the Lord, this has happened, praise the Lord, this has happened, then I will pray quietly in my heart. I will say, Lord, tell me what has happened so I can tell them. Maybe it has happened, but they don't know. Therefore, if they don't talk, then I will say, there's somebody there. This has happened to you. Check it up. Then the fellow will quickly wake up and say, oh, praise the Lord, this is what has taken place. Then I say, this other person, that other person. By the time uh, the word of knowledge brings out uh, three cases like that, the others now, now, they begin to say yes praise the Lord this has happened and this has happened and then they come out to give the testimony what's that you see the invisible why did not I run away after I finished prayer and uh, nobody said anything because I saw the invisible if you see the invisible you will accomplish the impossible you believe that it will be so in Jesus name in the case of Moses we're told he endured as seeing him that is invisible. And uh, we, if you know the case of Abraham, he called those things which be not as though they were. Actually, that's what God himself did. He called him Abraham. When as yet, he had no child. And Abraham means father of nations. And he already called him with that name, knowing that those things have happened, even though they have not been manifested in reality. And in our lives, I believe that if we will walk by faith, we will see the invisible. Then the Lord will walk out mighty things in our lives in Jesus' name. And then point number three, faith that accomplishes the impossible. I need to tell you something. If everything you do in the ministry is something that is naturally possible, you won't go far in the ministry in the kingdom of God. If everything you do is something that is naturally, normally possible with education, with training, with development, with experience, with natural ability, with natural talent, if everything you do can be classified under one of those things and there is no supernatural thing there, you will not be able to go too far. But 
you are going far. You will accomplish the impossible. Because you will believe the Lord. I've read the references to you already. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now, I, in these uh, congresses, I tell you the things I tell you. Now, you know that I don't uh, talk like this when I get to the crusade. I don't do that because I'm talking to unbelievers. And I'm talking to normal, ordinary, run-of-the-mill, day-to-day believers, encouraging them. But you are leaders. And I'm expecting that by the grace of God, you are going to go back to your locations. You are going to do the same thing. And uh, that's why I share my experiences with you. I normally do something when I go to crusades. And I've been to a number of crusades uh, this year in this country and also outside Nigeria. And when I get to a place, normally I've seen all the testimonies of the things that happened in the other places I've gone. When I get to a new place and I'm having a crusade, I say, Lord, I want to make progress. I want to pray for something that I never prayed for before. Something that I will be afraid to pray for in the last crusade or last month or last uh, three months. I want to be able to go ahead and pray for it now. That's how you make progress. You challenge yourself. You attempt the impossible. You can do it. I said you can do it. If you have faith as grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And if you do not doubt in your heart, you will have whatsoever you say. Have faith in God. Whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. I believe it is now your turn. I think, uh, you know, as I'm getting older, although when I saw Bishop Underwood more than 70 years of age uh, preaching tonight with strong voice, I was thinking that I was going to hand everything over to you, but when I saw him, I said maybe I should still spend some more years. Uh, praise the Lord! But you will do it. While I'm doing it here, you are doing it there, you are doing it there, you are doing it in Ghana, you are doing it in Kenya, you are doing it in Tanzania, doing it in South Africa, doing it everywhere. Everywhere blind eyes will be opening. Everywhere deaf ears will be hearing. Everywhere the lame will be rising up and walking. Everywhere the people that have AIDS, they'll be getting cured. Everywhere you'll touch them, they will get well. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, shall not hurt them. You will lay your hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Behold, I give unto you power over the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies touch you. You will tread on serpents and uh, scorpions because nothing they will be impossible for you you will say it whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven for i give unto you the keys of the kingdom the keys of the kingdom is the name of jesus is the power of the holy ghost is the promise of god and you are standing upon that word of god and nothing shall be impossible unto you if the people do not have a part of their body that part of their body will be created creative miracles will take place healings will take place our sisters will do it our brothers will do it our young people will do it everyone we're going to go out in the name of the lord and everywhere we go in this country in this continent the sick will be getting healed demons will be cast out in the name of jesus he that believeth in me the works that i do he shall do and greater works than this shall he do because i go to the father are you ready to do it rise up and tell the lord it's your turn it's your turn, you can do it. It's your turn, you can do it. The Lord has given us authority, has given us power. The signs shall follow them that believe. Don't you believe? Don't you believe? 
Don't you believe? Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. It's in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever you ask in that name, the Father will do it that the Son, that he may be glorified in the Son. Attempt the impossible. If you do not attempt it, how would you know you can do it? If you give in to your fear and you are quiet, how would you know you could do something? If you never prayed for the sick, how will you know God has given you the power? If you never attempt casting out devils, how will you know that the power, the gift is there already? Even though you may have a little fear, don't think about it. Just go ahead and pray for the sick. Just go ahead and cast out the devil. Just go ahead and pray for the barren. Just go ahead and move that mountain. Just go ahead and buy those evil forces. Just go ahead and claim the promise. Even when you feel you are afraid, even when you feel you cannot do it, when I got started, I was afraid a lot, a lot of fear. Don't worry about the fear. What if nothing does not happen? Don't worry about it. What if the blind eyes do not see? Don't worry about it. What if the sick does not get well when I pray? Don't even think about it. What if the demon is stubborn and will not go out? Don't worry about it. Go ahead and do it. You can do it. You will do it. It's now your turn. It's now your turn. Don't run away from the sick people. Pray for them and heal them. Don't run away from the demon possess. Pray for them and deliver them. Don't turn away from the people having problems. Get near them and solve the problem. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's bow and eyes closed. Let me ask you a question. I told you that 1985, when we had a crusade in the National Stadium, I was very, very much afraid to pray for the blind, pray for the lame, pray for very difficult cases. Let me ask you, what if I yielded to that fear and I never opened my mouth to pray? I came out of that fear 
by neglecting the fear and going ahead to pray for the sick. And then the result came in spite of the fear. What I'm telling you is if we want to see multiplication of the power of God in our lives so that it is not just general superintendent, our pastor at the headquarters, and a few other people that can do this or do that. If we want to see the same level of manifestation in administration, you are going to overlook the fears you may have. Don't worry about what happens. Leave that in the hands of God. You are not doing anything for man to see. You are going on in obedience to the word of the Lord. He is the one that said, as you go, preach, and then heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils, raise the dead. Freely you have received, freely give. So as we are praying tonight, you are going to make up your mind that anywhere you find sickness, anywhere you find demonic attack, you are going to address the issue. You are going to pray, seeing the invisible. And if there is any sickness in your body, that's not right. Because your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And sickness is not of God. And that thing has no right to be there. And I can tell you that I'm going to pray for you. And that sickness cannot remain there. And then you yourself now, you'll take over to begin to pray for other people. The question is, will you do it? It means that after the Congress, you will see something that you couldn't have attempted before the Congress. And now you will say, I'm going to attempt the impossible for the Lord. And we're going to be hearing of the testimonies coming from your area. Because with you, the same God that has worked mightily in my little way, I believe that same God will walk through your life. You can do the same thing. We've been saying it before. Now is the time for you to arise and do it. Lay hands upon yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because we know that your promises are yes and amen. We know that with you nothing shall be impossible. And when we truly believe with us, nothing shall be impossible either. I bring all your children before you wherever there is sickness, wherever there is affliction, torment, or infirmity. Lord, I pray you touch them by that mighty invisible hand right now. Heal them in Jesus' name. I pray that that infirmity, you take it away by your mighty power in Jesus' name. Your sickness, you have no right to be there. Therefore, I command you, in the name of the Lord, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have been told that they are buried by doctors. Lord, I cancel that thing. Because the doctor does not have the final say. Your word is final. The authority you have given us overcomes anything coming from the world. Therefore, Lord, I pray that barrenness take it away in Jesus' name. Any oppression, any affliction of the devil. Lord, I pray those demonic attacks and afflictions take everything away in Jesus' name. 
I pray that your healing virtue will pass through their body. You heal everyone instantaneously right now in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Now Lord, I pray for every brother and every sister. You have told us to go. And you have told us that if we truly believe, this sign shall follow us. I pray, O oh Lord, as they go. And they minister to the needy. And they minister to the sick. And they minister to the oppressed. And they minister to the afflicted. Lord, I pray you walk mightily with everyone in Jesus' name. I pray that your power will walk through them. Your word will be a word of authority in their mouths. I pray that these brothers and sisters will see the supernatural in their ministries in Jesus' name. Heal the sick through them. Open the eyes of the blind through them. Make the lame to rise up and walk through them. Lord, I pray that the incurables will be cured through them in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh Lord, through your people, in every state, in every region, in all the local government areas, in the countries from which we have come, we'll see miracles we have never seen. The people back at home will experience healing they have never experienced. They will experience deliverances they have never experienced. I pray, O oh Lord, that as your people go back home, that faith will be real in them. Yeah. And it will stir up the gift in them. Yeah. And they will do that which seems impossible in Jesus' name. Yeah. Do it, Lord. Yeah. Do it, Lord. Yeah. So that testimonies of miracles, signs, and wonders will become the usual thing in the fellowships your people have come from Amen. even from this very place Amen. give them assurance Amen. that you have given them the power Amen. we pray O oh lord as the power comes you keep us humble Amen. help us not to be proud Amen. help us to do everything for your glory alone for the edification of your church. Amen. For the joy of your people. Amen. So I will help more people. Bring more people into the kingdom of God. I pray, O oh Lord, that everyone here will have the evidence and see the sign 